was gonna ask you is, you know, should we show this to a couple groups? Yeah, he actually went to the park. So I should be getting a full ask offer. Cheers. Cheers. A lot of the uh, due diligence is kind of like babysitting the transaction. You want me to just follow up with the guy? No, no, let's call him. Oh, I mean, right. I want to get this f***ing deal if we can. Yeah. It goes by <laughs> Tina on Winkler and Armin, how are you? Good, good. Are you... Oh, you leave me a message? Okay, any reason for that? for that kind of now because of the upside and that, that's my thought I mean what I don't want to have happen is I just don't want the market to shift on us with interest rates and all that stuff that's going on yeah I understand okay so I was going to ask you is you know should we show this to a couple groups just to take their temperature well we can show it to them but if, uh, if you get an offer you can get paid okay and, and that, that four million dollar marks the mark correct no. Okay, I just wanted to double check. Um, and then on the 4125 on that, you would be willing to pay the 3.5% commission? Yeah. Okay. Um, why don't I just show this to a couple of groups and let's take their temperature? Okay. Okay. All right, well, I mean, I'll get it set up on the website. Okay. All right, so that's an example of a open listing. That would be an off-market deal. The guy gives us okay to show it to some people. Now, it's going to be confidential. And we're just going to show that to our top preferred buyers because we only want to expose that to the people who actually have the ability to buy it and not waste a bunch of time because, again, it's not exclusive, so we're not going to spend hours on it. But this is where the off-market broker relationships come into play is something like this is a deal that you wouldn't be able to be shown unless you, were, unless you had a previous relationship with us. So we're gonna put on the website okay i'm gonna set up the build out and the ca and all of that let me uh take you on this call okay see ya. this neil hey neil it's Enon. how are you good how are you sir good i got mario here with me hey neil how are you man yes good good so what we just sent you was three offers i think what's important do you have HOA docs that you can send me? Like, what are you looking for? Well, uh, you know, typically with an HOA, there's like, you know, some type of rules and covenants and what they're responsible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we got the information from you that was handwritten. We got all that. So we got all that into our spreadsheets and we provided all that. We provided the map. But I think the next important piece of this puzzle, because is, is being able to share these HOA docs with these people, because I don't want a landmine to come up as they're in due diligence as if they didn't know something. Everybody's asking about them. The other question that I have is who's responsible for collecting the rents from the HOA and, and who makes the decisions on what you do? Right now, and, and, and again, I need to finalize this information and make sure they have everything. We got one offer at 490, one at 575, and one at 475. The yeah, actually the 575. Yeah, he actually went to the park. He lives in Houston, but he actually, he actually saw the park. Disjoint in the ownership. Yeah, well, yeah. well, yes, and and don't worry. I mean, we'll. I sent these to you preliminary because I know that you had a little bit of a ticking time. So this is what we've drummed up in the three days that we've two days, whatever it's been. We've been working on it. The one guy we know has seen the park. I have another guy going tomorrow out of Houston to see the park. But with that being, I mean, it's just what we do. I mean, it's it's you know yeah. it's it's. Okay. But but yeah. I, I will tell I will tell you this. I've only done one business with one of these groups. Um. So. I will bet them as hard as I can on the front end. That's my job. Thanks, awesome, man. Neil. Thank yeah, you. So quick update, the uh, off-market Georgia deal that we're showing to a couple groups. So I should be getting a full ask offer on that from one of the uh, larger groups that we deal with. They actually happen to be under contract on our Indiana deal as well. So yeah, that's a good start to this morning. And then right now I am on the way to drop off a few watch parts. So if you didn't know this, I'm a vintage watch collector and launching a vintage watch store online. But uh, I have a vintage 6694 Rolex Oyster date that I am restoring right now. So aside from that, I'm trying to hammer out a ton of cold calls today because I also need to edit my uh, actual episode one. Then aside from that, on Lighthouse Oaks, we got a lot of the due diligence items we are waiting on. Everything seems to be moving forward, and I'm glad that uh, hopefully we'll get this offer on the uh, Georgia deal where you can get on a contract on that.
guys, this is Patricia. Hey, my name's Armand Violi. I was trying to get a hold of Ariel Cruz. Um, Call a half percent interest rate. Um, you may be open to interest only, but make their best offer. How about that? That's right. And, uh, and we could probably set it up to where it was, uh, it was only a uh, certain amount over the central road. I don't use my board, I guess. So, uh, something like that. Yeah. Okay. And then. On after, are you okay with a 30-year AM on that after the interest rate, the 30-year amortization period? Yeah, probably 20 year would be better now. I'll just tell them that you're looking for 20 and let's just see what they come back with. He would like to do a five-year term and then have the ability to renegotiate after the five-year term. He's looking for 4.5% interest rate. He said he would be open to interest only for a period of time. He mentioned a 20-year AM, not a 30-year AM. I did ask him about a 30, but he mentioned 20. What I told him on that seller carry was that I'll give these terms to you um, and that you may come back with a little bit different terms and we just got to review them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, because those are very, those are going to be tough terms to work with. I mean, the price and the lot of rents, I mean, financing in general is going to be, it's going to be a tough, a tough kind of play. He already pars parceled it off and everything, so he, he said he's got that handled. Okay. okay. that the property manager there just can't scan all of them. Um, I'm not sure what exactly he means. Hey Miles, just so you know what's going on with this, I gotta do an explanation for the, so I'm doing an office vlog or attempting okay. to, but I'm gonna do an explanation for that, but it's also good for you to listen. So this call is a, it's a due diligence call for that's the uh the one we did the underwriting on no this is the, the Indiana deal that I have under contract. A lot of the uh, due diligence is kind of like babysitting the transaction. Cause there's all this info that you need the seller's like well why can't you figure it out the buyer's like no we need it and some of it's not needed some of it is and then so depending are you guys trying to figure out what they do and don't need or anything? yeah and like it's like, like the hard copies of what like actual documents that they they're gonna need. yeah and the only reason why it's so important is because the contract timeline is on like a 45 day timeline mm -hmm. or 30 day or 60 yeah day it all whatever. depends on what that due diligence period is yeah. to get them everything yeah but there's just a, there's a ton of stuff, especially with the mobile home parks. Now, due diligence is especially um, tough on mobile home parks because we're dealing with a lot more mom and pops yeah. than investors. So these guys, this is open door capital. These are the, big, like, the bigger pockets guys. Yeah, so these guys know what they're doing. But as far as like the sellers being kind of rural or sometimes mom and pops, they don't have all that info on hand. And then they think it's a lot of work to get it. So Yeah, so we're, we're part of the due diligence um, crew. And so uh, you might want to mention that to him. I'm texting him now. So one thing that we're dealing with with this group is there's such a large investment group that they have multiple different due, dil due diligence um, teams and their deal sourcing team seems to have a disconnect between their new due diligence team. And it's causing a little bit of issues because we have to get them information multiple times. And then they're asking for slightly different informa information and they're not aware of like who's doing the site visit right now, who they're sending out, and they're saying if we contact them, let them know that we're with the due diligence team. There's just a lot of moving parts with this. I mean, these are things you have to handle when you have multi-million dollar transactions. So, okay, so what I'm doing right now is I got the one offer on the off-market Georgia deal I was talking about in the last episode. Um, I'm forwarding that to the seller now. Yesterday, we had a conversation with them about the seller financing and a few questions around it. I don't want to come in at full ask and have him just counter us with a higher pass full ask offer because it wasn't really like a hard number on the price he gave us. It was more of like, this is what to shoot for. So if we hit that in the first try, I don't want him to be like, well, if you got me that that easy, we'll go higher. So I'm going to really word it in the way like I told them price to you was important. I thought that they needed to get the full ask to get it done. So they shot this offer hoping they'd get it done. And then we're probably going to get countered on the seller financing terms. Now I do have a second offer that's coming in. It was supposed to come in by lunchtime today. It'll be in probably by end of day because the guy's in California, but I'm expecting that as well. Hey, hey it's Armand with Other Street just uh, following up on so I just forwarded over one of the offers from the groups to your email, um, and then we sh we should expect the second one by the end of today. So we're at Bikes, Beans, and Bordeaux. It's a uh, little cafe, but we're doing a team lunch that we do once every two weeks now. 
Yeah, for I two believe. weeks on Friday. What we're doing is just like the touch base with each other for the, uh, just with the company and everything. Yes, I do. Now that we're all together, I figure we might as well run through what we have exactly as far as what's under contract, what the status is on pretty much just everything under contract. Um, so transaction coordinator, Cheyenne. Hello, okay, so we have nine things under contract and three more going under contract next week. And a lot of it is still in the due diligence process. So we're working on it. Everything's moving forward, um, but it definitely gives us plenty of time to bring in new deals. Okay. You know anything to add? Yeah, it's, it's just crazy times right now. We're we're running and gunning, and you know, honestly, we're slamming deals left and right. Everyone's doing a great job, and you know, it's super busy. So on today's episode of Journey with Cheyenne and Armand, Enon recommended this coffee place, Lobos, next door. So uh, we're gonna be a little late to the office. Cheers. Cheers. Give me a rating, one through ten. Okay, hold on. If it's any good. Oh, it's a 10. It's a Do you 10. want to try it? Yeah, I'll take this. That's, I get the chai tea latte at Starbucks. Oh, man. So that's good. Really good. Wow. Oh, I mean, it's, just, it's a pretty cool event. Can you close yeah, the yeah. door? Yeah, I'm definitely in. Hey, Ed, it's Enon. Oh. Hey, Ed. It is Enon and Armin, 314 on Friday. Hope you're having a good day. Hey, we're just following up with that offer. Um, will you give us a call when you get a chance? Okay guys, so to recap this week, as far as that Georgia property, we only ended up getting the one offer on it north of four million. We did just try calling the seller and he didn't answer. It is late on a Friday, so we'll probably try him either tomorrow morning or early Monday. And then aside from that, Riverbend Mobile Home Park, that's officially under contract. We had the contract executed on that on Tuesday. The confidential Indiana property is still moving forward. Everything's fine with the due diligence. The uh, There's just a little discrepancy on what information they needed or what we provide. Then other than that, uh, yeah, Collins Mobile Home Park, we're gonna start showing that next week um i got the okay to show it towards the end of this week but i had to still catch up on other calls anyways don't forget to like and subscribe i do have a uh private investor group link is in the bio and if you guys need to get a hold of me my contact info will be there too thanks for watching